so hello everyone and today I will be doing another short video uh, this time on a match that was played in 1960 between Grandmasters Meng Li Kuo and Chai Fu Ru okay uh, a short introduction uh, Grandmaster Meng Li Kuo uh, is of Manchurian descent uh, he was six his best placing in the Chinese National Individual Championships was sixth place in 1960 uh, but he's more well known for his ferocious attack and he caught the uh, attention of the, the Shangqi players of his era because uh, he kept uh, capturing the enemy's elephant before going for the kill he is also very professed in the deferred opposite direction cannons and same direction cannons openings and has many novelties of his own. Uh, one of his most famous students was Grandmaster Pu Feng Po which is, who is still in active play to, today. And uh, this photograph is a rare photograph that was found in the it was found from Pai Tu. Uh, Grandmaster Mong's opponent uh, is Grandmaster Tai Fu Ru. Uh, he is from Guangzhou, China and studied under Chen Songshun. Uh, Grandmaster Tai Fu Ru was, was very f much feared in his heyday. He was uh, second place in the 1964, 66 and 74 uh, Chinese National Individual Championships, losing only to Hu Rong Hua. And in 1964, he even led the, most of the players most of the way until Hu Rong Hua managed to overtake him. Uh, Grandmaster Tai uh, retired in the 1980s and chose to take a backseat role and he, he was coached to the Guangdong team in the 1980s and uh, the, the, score, the results of the Guangdong team under his tutelage are, are just simply so well known and this photo is from Pai Tu So without further ado, let us enjoy their match. Uh, in the match, uh, red was Grandmaster Mong and black was Grandmaster Chai. Uh, so both players started out with the central cannon versus the screen house defense and both players advanced their seventh pawn. So at this point, uh, the uh, horse can be to trap chariot variation was discussed in the previous video last week, and in this in this match, um, Black chose to offer a trade of chariots, and in the match, uh, Grandmaster Mong refused to trade chariots and chose to attack the Black horse, and sometimes uh, Redwood. Red would choose to trade chariots, and this would probably be a possible line. And um, it would be hard to say which uh, player would have the advantage, although it is generally acknowledged that Red would have a slight advantage. Uh, but there would be plenty of chances for Black to progress in the game. So, back to the match. Uh, in the match, R2 equals to 3 was played as Red attacked the black horse. And Grandmaster Chai chose <coughs> sorry, Grandmaster Chai chose to protect his horse in this manner. Uh, this is a commonly used tactic whereby after protecting the horse, the cannon will be retreated to the throat rank where it can traverse and attack the enemy chariot. Um, in response, uh, Grandmaster Mong chose to push his horse to the riverbank, and this would be to uh, just in case if Black treated the cannon, the red horse would be ready to move here to attack the horse, the black enemy the horse. And instead of R7 equals to six to move the horse to the riverbank, uh, developing the left chariot as a rank chariot is another commonly played variation. Uh, a commonly seen line would be uh, 
uh, this again as in the previous spot last week uh, this will target the uh, red chariot and at this point um, red could usually choose to counter with uh, p5 plus 1 or r3 equals to 1 so if red chose to push the central pawn forward And in this situation, black can be considered to have the advantage because not only does black have an advantage in terms of material, uh, he will be attacking this rather empty uh, left flank of red. And although red captured two elephants in as compensation, uh, he will not be able to organize any effective attack uh, for the moment. Uh, black's elbow horse would be a major cause of concern. So at this point, instead of pushing uh, the central pawn forward, uh, choosing to capture the edge pawn with R3 equals to 1 will be another commonly seen variation that was played <coughs> at that time. And in this situation, uh, black will still be able to hold his own against red, and uh, it will be a satisfactory opening for black. Uh, one thing to note after capturing the edge pawn, um, what would happen if black did not trade chariots to uh, eliminate the threat of the, rip, the red chariot on the rip file and chose to? Uh, push his horse forward, what would happen? Uh, uh, if the red chariot captured the black horse, black would simply play C9 equals to 3 and gain back some lost material. The, the positioning of the um, black pieces would be better, so that would be why red would choose to capture or trade chariots. And as can be seen, uh, red black will still have a very playable game. Uh, the black cannon, uh, if the red chariot were to attack the black cannon, the black cannon could move here or can be protected with the chariot in this manner. Uh, so at this point, um, it would be still too early to uh, say who would have the advantage. So that is why uh, black would want to choose to trade a chariot that did not uh, have any major role on the board for a chariot that was threatening. So, uh, as can be seen, uh, developing the left chariot as a rank chariot is one of the more commonly played variations in this situation. But uh, back to the game, Red chose to push his horse to the riverbank. And at this point, uh, Grandmaster Chai played aggressively and it was also a continuation of uh, his moves earlier with uh, c2 plus 4 mo while moving the black cannon to red pawn rank black would again be prepared to attack the red pawn and the chariot and the elephant so uh, this was one of the ways that the opening was played uh, back in the 1960s um, for modern day <coughs> the development of the opening system nowadays would see that black play do would see that black develop his chariot as a rank chariot so that his major pieces would be out early so at this point um red would usually continue with the 5 6 cannons or the 5 7 cannons if the 5-6 cannons were played, a possible line would be
and it will be a very exciting situation uh, there will be a little room for error although uh, red will be a piece down uh, he will be compensated with two black advisors and the chariots will be attacking mercilessly so uh, at this point in time uh, it will be still too early but um, there will be little room for error this is uh, what might happen if the 5-6 cannons were played if the 5-7 cannons were played uh, a possible line will be shown below Uh, red will have the initiative so uh, although red would be uh, the moves ended here in the magazine the periodical chi where this spot was taken from uh, one might wonder what would happen uh, could, wouldn't red lose his chariot uh, black would not dare to capture the chariot at this at this moment because if he did Red will be threatening to checkmate and Black will be forced to move his king out check and um, Red will actually have the, a major advantage in this situation now so uh, at this point it will be considered that uh, Red would have the initiative in the match so a little bit review the 5-6 cannons and the 5-7 cannons variation uh, were all derived from black uh, developing his chariot as a rank chariot so back to the match um, Grandmaster Tai Furu advanced his cannon uh, threatening to capture the red chariot the red pawn and threaten the red chariot and elephant so at this point in time uh, how did Grandmaster Mong continue And uh, as mentioned before, one of the trademarks of Grandmaster Mong Li Kuo was his uncanny ability to attack, uh, to capture the enemy's elephant before going for the kill. So uh, it will be still, it will still be a little bit too early, but uh, the repercussions of this move will be seen, will be appreciated shortly after. Uh, Black continued to attack the red chariot as planned and black countered aggressively and grandmaster chai countered ag aggressively in the match also so it will be a contest of uh, speed to see who who was faster who, who will be faster in the final kill so grandmaster mong developed his left chariot and the horses were traded and uh, it would seem that black would have the upper hand at this moment in time because um, the elephant will be captured and there will be another cannon uh, attacking and the chariot could uh, traverse to this flank for a full, full out attack on red's right flank but it was at this time that uh, grandmaster mong ignored red's threat and chose to push his pawn aggressively forward check and uh, at this point in time uh, there will be no backing out now so uh, to prevent loss of material the great king was moved out to threaten the black advisor and also to capture the black chariot with a series of checks bam this was this is the trademark of the elephant assassin uh, it was a very aggressive play by Grandmaster Mong and uh, the reader it would be still about 10 moves before the final kill would uh, suffice but uh, one might try to see I'll try to pause the video to see if you can uh, see the final kill uh, Black continued to attack Uh, as the 
central cannons were uh, Red's biggest threat. Uh, Grandmaster Chai tried to trade cannons, but uh, Red just wouldn't allow it. So uh, at this point, Black would be only one move away from a kill. So uh, how would Red end the game? Check. Check. Check again. A very aggressive sacrifice. So Black in the match, Black did not dare to capture the uh, the red chariot with the cannon. But what would happen if he did? Check. And red would win. Uh, of course, red could also capture the black horse directly as uh, retreating the retreating the um, chariot would result in a smothered cannon checkmate. So that was why uh, black did not dare to capture the red chariot, and this allowed Grandmaster Mong Li Guo to continue attacking. Check. Another check from the central file. Checkmate. So this was a very uh, powerful and very artistic checkmate by Grandmaster Mong, and it all started with capturing the elephant. And this was one of his trademarks back in the early days. Um, there are many, 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 many more other examples of Grandmaster Mong. Uh, you, uh, using the same tactic of capturing the enemy's elephant before mounting a final kill, and uh, this is one of the more, this is one of the more famous ones. And in the post-game commentary, uh, it was said that Grandmaster Taifu did not make any major mistakes. It was simply uh, Red's attack that was too ferocious. So I hope you have enjoyed this match as much as I did, and. Um, Hopefully I can find time to find more of Grandmaster Mong's brilliant uh, kills initiated by, initiated by capturing the enemy's elephant.